But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Oh, come on. Did you know John Wick was originally supposed to be called Scorn? You learn something new every day. Look, it's no surprise John Wick is now a household name. Four films, spin-offs, a potential fifth film. Please know. Amen. It has most definitely cemented its name. It only took one film. Lionsgate and Kolstad pissed the script to Keanu, who immediately warmed up to the idea and saw immense potential. Keanu the fortune teller, y'all. He brought in his longtime stuntman partner Chad Stalitsky and David Leitch, the director of Deadpool 2 and also a known stuntman. <laughs> And while they created a cultural icon, not a lot of buzz was around this film. Nobody expected a success, hence the very low budget setting around 20 to 30 million dollars. Movie made 87.7 million, pretty much almost tripled the budget if we count the 30 million. I'm just gonna put this out, this was Chad's first film as a director as well as for David. The only notable name that was marketed heavily was Keanu who, let's face it, wasn't at the top like he was during his Matrix days, or even compared to now. You're Breathtaking. So yeah, not a lot was riding on this film, but oh boy, creativity can come a long way. Proving you don't need 200 to 300 million dollars to create something brilliant and engaging. Uh-huh. The film begins with the wounded John Wick struggling to get on his feet. He takes his phone from his coat and plays a video of his wife and him enjoying their time on the beach. As the screen fades. John's wife faints as we learn that she was suffering from a terminal illness and unfortunately, she was taken away from John's world. A grieving John receives an unexpected special gift from his wife though, before she passed, a puppy to have a last semblance of her to help John get through his emotions of losing her. We'll grab you some kibble later. Over time, John bonds with the puppy going on Joe rides, some of them being batshit insane. <laughs> But John needs gas in his car and probably the last time he will ever go to a gas station. As some Russian weasels comment and poke fun at him, but John's words set them up. So being the morons they are, they entered the Baba Yaga's house. And vandalize his property, breaking his SUV and murdering his wife's gift to him in front of his eyes and robbing his car. The idiots begin to celebrate robbing the boogeyman like there was a big reward for it at the end and Aurelio smacks Lucifer for making the biggest mistake of his life, literally. No, Crazy shit, man. He kicks them out for good reason and receives a call from Vigo who immediately understands the deserved smack oh. and smacks his son himself. <laughs> Much deserved. And we get this very cold introduction, I'm telling you it sounds fucking badass. It's John Wick. Vigo pretty much describes John Wick as your worst nightmare when the camera cuts to John Wick literally digging up his killer past. Vigo wishes his son good luck cause this is the last time Vigo will ever see him. Vigo obviously tries to do a peace talk with the boogeyman but come on it's John you're pretty much bidding with the devil here. Like civilized man to move on. The entire film just consists of John going on a killing spree, Vigo sending bodies just to up the count, 77 bodies by the way, and that's just on screen. Wig gets his revenge and faces Vigo even in death, respects John immensely despite the trouble he gave him throughout the film. The film goes back to the beginning as we see John adopt the pit bull who probably had his best day ever as he was saved from being put down. And well, the revenge spree for John Wick is finally over and he can finally rest in peace with his new pit bull. Until chapter 2. Wow, even talking about it brings me joy. John Wick was just more than an average action film. Chad and David innovated the action genre in a very unique way by taking this very simple concept and created an entire world filled with rules, consequences, and interesting personalities. Going in a revenge plot driven film, you weren't expecting a Nolan the Dark Knight style complex plot where there's many layers to a story, but John Wick sort of did a switcheroo. Instead of adding many layers to his story, the team decided to push the stairs towards the world. The John Wick world has mobsters, its own currency, cops don't mess with these guys, a body cleanup crew who made a shitload of money since John re-entered the scene, safe harbor hotels, a team of accountants who prove huge money hits, it's an entire system. Although John Wick is 
is a very skilled assassin, this very system Viggo tries to work around causes several troubles for John Wick throughout the film, and many friends such as Marcus are killed in the process. There is such a rich feel to this entire world, a very high society that's filled with shitty people looking to kill for money, and the dialogue just feels so different. It's not your average simple dialogue, but there's a bit more cheesiness to it. It's less of a normal conversation, as it certainly adds to its already charming world, despite not being able to relate to this very world, but you can fully get invested in. Jonathan. I love the character of John Wick, mysterious boogeyman that has a respectable name and a big image that many fear and don't want to cross paths with. Unfortunately, Vigo never talked about this myth to his son and showed a picture just to remind him to not mess with him. Anyways, John Wick doesn't really speak much. He's the typical one-liner badassery. It's almost shocking and engaging when the film really digs deep into his emotional moments. Like when Vigo mocked John, John screams of the importance of his dog and screams at Vigo to hand over his son and he will spare Viggo's life until that dog arrived on my doorstep. Do not need to grieve on the law. And your son took that from me. Kill that from me! So you can either hand over your yeah. son or you can die screaming alongside him! It's almost two sides of his character, one that is lethal and hides in the dark, no remorse, cold-blooded hitman, and the down-to-earth softer side. Viggo explained John Wick the man to his son and was well crafted and executed perfectly. Tyler Bates score rising to hit the iconic theme when Viggo begins to list the mistakes his son made. That fucking nobody is John Wick. Well, John wasn't exactly the boogeyman. You sent to kill the fucking boogeyman. John is a man of focus, commitment, and sheer will. I gave him an impossible task. The bodies he buried that day made a foundation of what we are now. And then my son, two days after his wife died, I killed his fucking dog. John will come for you. Chad and David took a much more broader approach of making the antagonist have to work themselves to avoid the biggest threat, which is John Wick. A concept like this can fail, but they made John's grief relatable to the audience. Him losing the very dearest thing to him is something we can all grieve with. In John's case, it was killed from him, and the film psychology makes you root for John. Just want to point out, everybody in this entire world are stone cold killers who earn money through blood. John is part of that group. He was a hitman after all, he probably killed a lot of innocent people when he was trying to get out of this entire world, but the directors are made aware to pick the less rotten apple from the bunch in this case. Last thing I'd like to point out, it's certainly the highlight, the action. With the budget of the film, I'm shocked to see what two inexperienced directors managed to pull off with such beautiful choreographed fight sequence with unique visuals, forcing scenes to not look dull, gray, and boring. The action feels more like an art style than your average film crafting action scenes. It fits the vibe of the rich nature and the hit man world such as the red circle shootout <laughs> The lighting really helps with the aesthetics with all these films, the location, set pieces, giving John Wick his own identity, a fighting style that hasn't been exploited a whole lot in Hollywood, Gun Fu. It's a style that was created by John Woo. I love that irony. The name pretty much explains itself, where the individual incorporates 50-50 of gunfight plus Kung Fu in close quarter combat. And Chad and David didn't shy away from this style. As stuntmen, they made sure the combat looked as real as they can achieve with the $30 million budget they had. No vomiting camera cuts where you can't see shit. They let each action scene feel breathable. More single shot scenes with stylistic camera movements. The directors obviously didn't use a real gun. Chad went on Joe Rogan's podcast to explain how they made the pistols safe as possible but still keeping that reality. I suggest watching that episode as you can learn more about the craft and it makes you respect the films even more like Keanu creating a much more quick way to reload a magazine of a gun that many combat specialists are teaching in academies. Honestly, having stuntmen make these films was an excellent directional choice. They live and breathe this work and know much better on what works and what doesn't. It's fun, yet narratively driven. I said what was needed to be said about this film. It's in my top 5 favorite films of all time because of how simple it is, yet it has so much more that it has the potential to go bigger and it did. One of the few franchises where the first one gave birth to an iconic character in one go. Now 9 years later, each film simply improved after each one. I'm definitely excited to cover John Wick chapter 2 where stakes are raised and the world gets even bigger. But that's it from me, so yeah.
See ya.